Uh, another fan question that we have is, I know that you have denounced that you are done with Drag Race. Would you ever go back on an All Stars? Denounced? Well, I've taken back. So I'd never ever said I was done with Drag Race. I said I was like exploring like my drag journey. I would never say never to Drag Race. I love Drag Race and I feel like um, I have got to do what I wanted to do. But I also have that thing of like going backwards mm -hmm. and going back to something that I... They didn't crown me in the first time. They had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't. So I'm like, I'm not here to avenge my title. Like, I don't feel like I lost out by not winning. Mm -hmm. And I love Lawrence Cheney. And I think Lawrence is an incredible queen and performer and everything. And I, I love seeing what they're doing. They're out in Vegas now. Like, they're doing the, they're doing the damn thing. Like, it's incredible to see. So I'm like, I'm so proud of her and the whole season. So I don't feel like I'm... I need to go back to avenge myself. I don't need to go back for that at all. If I was to go back, it would be because I feel like I'm ready to, or yeah. I want to. Um, so that's that's where I am with that. But I will say like my relationship with World of Wonder and Drag Race is fine. Like there's no ill ill issues between us at all. Like there's actually, there's I'm gonna be working with World of Wonder very, very soon, which Ooh. you'll all see, which I, I won't say now, but keep your eyes peeled because it might not be Drag Race All Stars, but we're gonna be doing something very soon. So you were announced as a contestant on season two of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. You were in the bottom on the first mm -hmm. week. Did you think that you were going to go home then? I don't know. Normally when I'm on bottom, I've got more control over what yeah, yeah. happens. So I was like a bit confused by it. But um, no, I, I don't know. I think I probably was meant to go home. I think mm -hmm. that's probably how it was like it was meant to it was meant to be when it comes down to like not saying that Drag Race do, but if there is a certain way that they would like things to go, I do think that I was probably in the bottom and Joe was, because Joe Black was like a renowned person and Joe's mm -hmm. an incredible performer. And I'd known of Joe for so, so much, so long before Drag Race. So to go against Joe, I was like, well, obviously I'm going to go home. Mm -hmm. But no underwear on, 10 in shoes. Like I just went for it and performed because that's what I love to do. And obviously I stayed which I'm very glad about, but it really did not my confidence back at that time. I think I was like, yeah, obviously Joe had gone and I was like, what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. And then it took a minute to like really get back into the suite. Well, it didn't take a minute, it took seven months. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say, because when you came, there was, there was the, um, there was the assumption that Lawrence Cheney was going to win at the first four episodes. After that, when you guys came back from the COVID break, which was what, seven months? Yeah. You were full throttle. Yeah. You were ready to like knock some bitches I out. I don't know what happened, but like, I think I had a minute to digest it. Sometimes it can take a minute for me. Like I can have a switch, a light bulb moment. Again, what I was saying about like addiction and things, it's like only you can help yourself in that situation. It, it applies to that as well. It's like you can, I was like anxious or in my head and then suddenly you can have a switch moment where you're just like, okay, game on. And that, that kind of happened for me. And I think, Everyone talks about the seven month break and like it was obviously awful for us, for everyone. The whole world experienced mm -hmm. this like, something that we hadn't experienced before in our lifetime and, and everything was crazy. And like I came out of the show and all the work had finished and nothing, nowhere was open and all, all, it, was yeah, it was a crazy time. But I was, we were lucky that we were working, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of queens, especially in Scotland, they didn't get to do that. Yeah. Whereas like, yeah, we were doing stuff online or like they could have done that, but like we, we were able to, when stuff opened up in London, to go back to work. So we had that, and I think that kind of got me through the summer and then went back to the show. Everyone was like, did you change your looks? I didn't. They were the same ones. Really? Yeah, the only one I changed was a, f a theme called Red Carpet, which never actually happened. Like I had a red carpet outfit, and then I changed it, because my, my reveal fucked up in the second episode. So I wanted to like redeem myself, even though it wasn't a, re a reveal, if Red Carpet happened. I was going to do 90s... Um, it was 90s Marilyn Monroe in uh, Marilyn Monroe, Ma Marilyn Manson, 90s Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> I was like, wait, she was alive. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Manson into um, Rose McGowan. And obviously all of this shit has come out about Marilyn Manson, which uh -huh. I'm very glad that I didn't do because it was like before all of this, all the stuff had come out. But I was going to do the reveal into the outfit, but um, into Rose McGowan in the 90s. But it, You're talking about like happen. the VMA one, right? Yeah, the VMA. Yeah. So I had... Uh, his outfit and then her outfit. And I was gonna do like the wig and everything. But um, that was the only one I worked on. That was the only one I changed. And then it didn't even get used. So that's at home somewhere, that outfit. But everything else was the same. 
but the the confidence was different. Yeah, I think so. I think I went in. I went back in. Like I said with the first episode, it threw me off. I went back into the show being like, whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. I went back into the show being like, I'm not here in a competition with anyone. I'm here for myself and I'm competing with myself here. So like anything I do, it it so happened that we did the, the girl group challenge first week and I love writing and I love performing. So that kind of set me up a bit in a good way. And then the, the snatch game, I love, again, I like writing and I like being silly and with a character, like studying and analyzing yeah. someone. And that, I found that really fun. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of, there was a, it, I felt like, I believe in the universe and I believe in fate and I believe that like, what you put out, you can get back. And I felt like, whatever happened in that time, even though I went through some like, go ups and downs, it was meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. I was meant to wear that, that Norwich City look in the first episode and that was meant to get to the final and wear the outfit. And I think the runways couldn't have gone in a better way for me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because once you start at the bottom, no one's got any expectations. So you can only go <laughs> up. All, you can only go <laughs> you up. You can only go up. But if you start high and then you fuck up, then like I said, people like to bring you down if you've gone back up, if you've gone up. So this show's called Exposed, as mm -hmm. you may know. So I always have the girls expose something that happened on the show that they wish would have been seen on the cameras. Mm -hmm. Tace was talking about how she sprayed red blood spray in Lawrence's face. Do you have a moment that you wish would have been on camera? I think, okay, yeah, episode one, um, when, before I was about to go on stage, um, so I'm wearing, the, obviously, the Norwich City leotard, tiny, tiny outfit, um, and no underwear. I literally had no underwear on. I was tucked. I would like, tape all up my ass and everything, and there was a, a lovely, like, one of the queen handlers, so we called... They were like the the exec, like producers on the show, but they would help. They would look after us, basically. Mm -hmm. They were called the Queen Handlers. A lovely woman called Wendy. And actually, someone tried to claim this for themselves when Wendy spoke about it on the show, but it was me, because Wendy messaged me <laughs> afterwards, like, no, it was about you. <laughs> um, I think it was Sminty. I love you, Sminty, but this story was me. Um, Wendy stitched, like, hand-stitched my crotch together <laughs> because... <laughs> Because I had these tiny little poppers, right? And I'm so glad that she did help me there because I was trying to do it. And I was literally like, a stitch in time saved me basically because if I had, I, I did all my legs spread and everything, yes. those poppers would have gone boop and I would have exposed myself <laughs> on <laughs> BBC. So those little bits of thread that Wendy stitched on my crotch saved my entire career. <laughs> I love that you call them, what, poppers? Poppers, the little... <laughs> I literally was like, wait, she put poppers on you? And you're like... <laughs> no, no, I wish... No, they give me a headache, poppers. They give me a headache. Loose enough. Um, it was, yeah, she basically just stitched the poppers together at my crotch so that um, it all held together. And I'm so glad that she did because everything could have gone ski whiff. <laughs> And so then I wish you would have went that. home. I would have gone home, but they wouldn't have shown Wendy on the show, but I wish they had. Because mm -hmm. Wendy was, I don't know if anyone saw on season four when they had the, the um, Queen Handlers come in to do the, they did the like, um, the, the makeover. Double, yeah. The makeover yeah. with, and Wendy was one of them and everyone loved Wendy. It was like, hey, she did her own show. Wendy was phenomenal. I love Wendy, but she, yeah, she, she saved my, she saved my ass that time. <laughs> she saved not just my ass, quite a lot more as well. A lot of popping. A lot, a lot of, of popping. popping. <laughs> 